Welcome to another lecture everyone. So in this lecture we are going to learn about alternating or AC currents. Uh, for most of this course we actually learned about DC or direct currents and DC circuits, how to solve them and etc. Then in the last lecture we learned about capacitors and inductors and learned what is called a transient current and transient circuits. Okay. And now, and for the rest of this uh, course, we are all actually going to learn about alternating currents or AC. So first off, all the acronyms are here. So DC stands for direct current, AC stands for alternating current, and transient, well, it's a word, but it actually means something that only lives for a short amount of time. So I think I should have made it more clear in the last lecture, but what we learned about transient circuits and what we did in the transient analysis, well, all of those things actually happen in an instance, like maybe in, within milliseconds or even microseconds. So it's really hard to see that in real time, okay? But they are there, they are there all right? So we need those kinds of analysis and we actually need all of this all of these different types of currents okay and i will go through a few applications that we are familiar with but we don't actually uh, have to extreme uh, exclusively study those okay so just to give you an idea for example uh, let's talk about direct currents so uh, almost every day we are using dc circuits uh, because anything that has a battery in it is basically a DC circuit and uh, pencil batteries and any kind of batteries actually produces direct current okay so for example the clock on your wall the remote you are using the phones or tablets you are using actually uses direct current and is just a giant di uh, DC circuit okay so DC circuit is everywhere uh, and almost every electronic device actually uses DC. So, for example, your computer actually uses DC. Your uh, TV actually uses DC currents. Okay? So, DC is, is everywhere. Then we have transient or more appropriately DC transient because uh, this is uh, used in conjunction with DC circuits. So if you ever open up your computer or anything, you will see that your motherboard has a lot of capacitors in it and inductors in it, etc. Okay, and uh, transient circuits are used for different purposes. Uh, even in uh, tiny, tiny devices, there are transient uh, circuits are used in lots of places. For example, uh, RAMs actually use uh, transient circuits. So I don't know if uh, many of you know this, but uh, you know, RAM is just a memory device, right? And so is hard drive and so is SSD, right? If you are a computer enthusiast, uh, you may know these things. Uh, so what's the difference between all of these? Mainly speed, okay? So RAM is very fast, but it can't actually retain uh, information so if your PC shuts down due to uh, I don't know load shedding uh, and all of those memories in RAMs get deleted right so when uh, if it didn't if it wasn't the case well when the current would come back all of your things would be just uh, like nothing happened okay but we have to restart the computer the computer actually restarts and etc all the applications have to be turned on and if you have any unsaved uh, things all of those goes away because those are in RAM and RAM actually uses transient circuits okay so uh, this is something I should have clearly mentioned in the last lecture but since transient circuits are very fast RAMs are also very very fast so the capacitor is actually used like a memory that retains a, ve a very short amount of time okay so this is very fast uh, whereas hard drive is very very slow SSD is f faster than a hard drive but uh, nowhere near RAMs okay so RAMs are really fast and that's due to being using uh, transient circuits in them Okay, 
then uh, we have alternating currents so uh, almost all the uh, electrical components we use uh, for example not electronics uh, electrical components for example your lights your fans uh, your ac your fridge etc you know high power devices uh, all of those actually uses alternating currents okay so i think you can see a pattern here what's used where so for example in low power devices uh, and where you need more control more uh, complex things actually okay so in those places you need dc currents and ac current is actually used where you need a lot of power output okay so for example uh, you need to run a ac or freeze or anything like that okay even light uses a lot of energy right so those are some uh, common applications of all three of these uh, types of currents uh, now let's take a look at what they actually are so for that i'm going to uh, use every circuit so uh, okay so in every circuit uh, for example this is the this is one of the very simple circuit we have actually already seen uh, so this is actually a, a dc circuit and there is no transient part uh, because uh, there is no capacitor or inductor right uh, only resistance and voltage source switch can be anywhere it can be in any circuit just used for turning on or off right so uh, let me start the simulation so what does a DC circuit or DC current actually looks look like? Okay, so uh, when I turn on this switch, uh, I can see that the currents or the charges are moving very slowly. So uh, this, each of these green uh, pixels are actually uh, kind of denoting a positive charge. And uh, we can see that they are moving uh, in this direction uh, in a clockwise and kind of in a steady manner they are kind of uh, moving in the same speed throughout the circuit right and it goes on and on there is no change about it so this is how actually DC circuit works this is a direct current and the voltage all of the voltage and currents are fixed just one constant number okay there is no change with time no nothing just a fixed uh, circuit a fixed voltage and current at every point and we have done uh, these types of uh, analysis on these types of circuits for example uh, we did nodal analysis on them we have used kvls kcls and etc and everything right so uh, we already know very well what this circuit is and this is how it actually kind of looks like when you uh, turn it on right so uh, next let's move on to uh transient circuits so we have actually seen transient circuits right so uh this is something uh, this is one of the transient circuits so in transient circuits uh we have capacitors or inductors which can store energy right and if i turn this switch on uh what will happen will uh, that just like the dc circuit uh, current will start to uh, move uh, charges will start to move and there will be current right uh, moving charges is just what we call currents but the interesting fact is uh, unlike the constant value constant voltage the values will kind of decay with time or rise with time right so for example if I turn this uh, switch on we can see that the voltage is rising and here we can see that with a nice visual uh, graph and now it's became steady Right? So after a while, this becomes a DC circuit, right? Uh, but if I uh, turn off the circuit again, uh, it now uh, it's now the voltage is going down, right? So decreasing and uh, it's going to uh, reach zero very soon. And that will also become a completely DC circuit after all of these charges are gone, right? Uh, so that's how transient circuits work. Uh, by the way, I should mention this works really fast. Uh, actually, every circuit shows you a slowed down version. Okay. And uh, so it seems like a lot of time passed by, but actually these are only like milliseconds time. Okay. So as you can see, this has almost reached zero volt because uh, after some time, obviously computers uh, cannot 
uh, uh, differentiate between zero and other things, right? A very low number and zero, so it has become a complete zero. And if I turn on the voltage again, we will see that the voltage is rising. Okay, so this uh, this is how it works. Uh, transient circuits it uh, changes with time. Okay, so you can change in mean. This is how the voltages and currents grow. So this is what transient circuit looks like. Now, what is alternating current or AC? So this is actually an AC circuit, and this is an AC source. So you can identify that by this uh, sine wave pattern and there is a frequency written beside it. Uh, although we actually use the same exact uh, notation as DC, but we write the sine function in there. So we'll go into that details later. So we, we actually don't use this, uh, this sign. We actually use the same voltage source sign. Uh, but uh, let's discuss it here. Uh, what, what's going on here? Let's discuss that. So uh, let's see what actually happens in an AC circuit. So let me turn on this device. Whoa, okay, what's happening here? So we can see that uh, all of these charges are oscillating in one place. So instead of going in one direction, the current or the charges are moving in two different directions, right? So it's going from left to right, then going back to left, right? So this is oscillating uh, back and forth. And if you look at one exact uh, green square, so maybe let's track this one, you'll see that it's actually not moving anywhere. It's just moving, at, uh, it's just staying at uh, one point basically uh, and just oscillating around that. So this is not actually moving like uh, moving a tiny bit or something. It's just exactly at that position, uh, centered at that position and oscillating between um, that area, right? Uh, so uh, this is a confuse. Uh, this is a bit confusing for a lot of students because uh, you might be thinking, well, the electrons are not going anywhere uh, on average, at least. Uh, then is there any current at all? Well, yes, there is actually current here. Because as we, as you can remember, we actually define current uh, by movement of charge, right? So if any time, uh, any way, a charge is moving, that's a current. Doesn't matter how it's moving or what it is or anything. So if you can remember, in the first lecture, I actually said that if you create a charged ball and just simply throw it away, that's a current because a charge is moving okay so anytime a charge moves that's a current and so even though on average the electrons are just at one position the they are moving right so they are moving oscillating around one point uh, a fixed point so that's a current and this is what we call alternating current and we call it alternating because, well, it's alternating between the directions. It's first going left to right and then going right to left, right? Uh, so this is what alternating current is. And you might be thinking, so what's so special about it? And we will talk about that later. But let's just focus on this uh, right now. So where did we actually see those uh, alternating currents? So actually, we mentioned that our lights, fans, and AC, etc., uh, all the high power devices actually uses uh, alternating currents okay uh, most of the high power uh, uh, components actually uses alternating currents uh, and this is because uh, all of our read systems and transmission lines are all alternate all are using alternating currents so all those electrical poles you can see on roads well those wires contains alternating currents so in those words you can imagine electrons are oscillating back and forth just like this and also that's what's happening in your light so uh, light bulbs right so i don't know if you have seen that sometimes your camera 
when you turn on your camera uh, with uh, fluorescent light bulbs or uh, any cheap light bulbs, you will see that the, uh, the flickering, there's a lot of flickering. This is because uh, our country actually uses 50 hertz system. So these electrons are moving 50 times uh, in one second, right? So this is insanely fast. Each second, those electrons are moving back and forth 50 times, right? So uh, that's why you actually s see those flickering with uh, cameras, but you can't actually make those out with your own eyes, okay? So uh, that's the whole system. So our whole national grid uses uh, AC current. And you can actually imagine why we are using in some sense. Okay, so for example, I kind of uh, think of it like this. Like for example, uh, if you had a battery. So for example, let's say uh, we are sending uh, electricity from Kaptai to Dhaka. Okay, so that's a long route, right? And if you had used DC, you, you'd have to send electrons from Kaptai to Dhaka, right? So that's a long way. And as you can imagine, a lot of energy would have been lost, okay? And kind of, that's also kind of ridiculous that uh, the amount of distance each electrons have to travel, right? So in our national grid system, never ever an electron from Kaptai comes to Dhaka. So the electron in Kaptai oscillates there, and that oscillation is passed on to the next electron beside it. And so all the electrons from Kaptai to Dhaka are just oscillating in their places, and that's what's uh, sending the energy, right? And that's AC current, basically. Okay, so as simple as that. Now, why do we need electric uh, alternating currents well there's a famous story behind it the thomas edison and tesla war here's a uh, so this is actually called uh, the war of the currents and you can search uh, all of the internet for this and you will find lots of lots of interesting things and i'm going to touch on a few of those okay so uh let me stop this simulation right now and let's get back to our note. 